All right. Good evening, everybody. So thank you for coming on tonight's Zoom call. Uh, we've got an awesome presentation for you. Um, and this is all brought to you thanks in part to uh, Titan Realty Group powered by eXp Real Estate. So yeah, eXp is an amazing uh, opportunity and you're seeing a lot of top teams, top agents, top performers like Clifton and his group coming over to this company in sort of record pace. Um, as a matter of fact, we've doubled in size the last year. Uh, we went from 15,000 agents to now we're over 31,000 agents in a year. And nice. so, so there's a reason why, right? There's a reason why uh, everyone's coming over and uh, I'm going to get into those reasons in very much detail here. And then uh, we'll kind of make sure we go through the history a little bit. We'll uh, cover some of the, uh, some of the big picture stuff and then we'll sort of really drill down into the benefits and the, the numbers, the uh, multiple income streams. But without further ado, I'm just going to kind of get into the story and uh, kind of walk you through. So let me introduce myself first. I'm, my name is Brian Colhane. Um, I am the co-founder and uh, one of the originalists of this company. As a matter of fact, I've been working with Glenn Sanford for uh, five years before we started eXp Realty in 2009. Um, I was a... Uh, uh, I was a sales guy out of Chicago. Um, I threw all my clothes in a bag, hitched a ride with a buddy, came out to Arizona in 2004, uh, collecting unemployment, very down and out uh, financially. But, uh, you know, I, I knew I wanted to get into real estate, so I ended up getting my license. And uh, while I was interviewing for, for job opportunities, I stumbled upon a Craigslist ad, and that ad happened to be Glenn Sanford. Uh, Glenn Sanford at the time, who is uh, Glenn, for those that don't know, Glenn Sanford is the uh, chairman of EXP World Holdings. Um, he was the founder, visionary. He was my coach and mentor. And uh, back in 2004, 2005, Glenn was just a real estate agent running teams around the country at Keller Williams. Um, he was definitely one of these big picture thinkers. Um, he's an entrepreneur that happens to be doing real estate. And I think that's a significant difference. I think there's two types of people that happen to be doing real estate, or there's two types of real estate professionals. There's uh, business people that happen to be doing real estate, and then there's real estate people that happen to be doing business. And I think uh, if you set this up right and you and and you implement the the model the way we can show you how to implement it, um, you're you're going to definitely start taking on more of the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, you know, I look at EXP as just a vehicle that allows for me to create wealth for my family and help a lot of people. And so I I think as we go through this, you'll start to see how this can. Um, you know, maybe elevate your mindset as well. Uh, because again, if you're just chasing deals and uh, you're just sort of trying to get a couple more closings in and, uh, you know, uh, rinse and repeat, you know, next year, maybe five, 10 deals this year, and then next year, five, 10, 15 deals, and then the next year, 15, 20 deals and so forth and so on. And as you can see, snap your fingers, five years goes by, snap your fingers, 10 years goes by. And at some point, you're going to be no better off than you were in your first year. So the way Glenn tr trained me very early on was to think like a business person. And by that, I mean, implement systems, be able to scale up your business, own a piece of the asset of the company that you're working for. And so all of these things are sort of our core values here at eXp. Um, but just to kind of finish off that, that history piece a little bit. So here Glenn was running seven teams around the country, um, all of them at Keller. And, and the reason why Glenn liked Keller was because at the time they were the only company in the, in, the, in the industry that had some form of residual income. Well, unfortunately for us and unfortunately for them, uh, it was in the form of profit share. And so um, if you really drill into um, residual income, um, you can be paid off of a lot of different things, you know, and, and, and it matters. You know, if you're getting a residual of something, you want it to be a big number. And unfortunately, um, a lot of these market centers weren't very profitable if they were even profitable at all. And so it didn't really matter how productive me or my team was or any of the teams that Glenn was running around the country were. Um, it all depended on if that ownership pool knew how to manage the money and spend the money wisely. And, and ultimately, um, even if they were profitable, it was already after expenses and after salaries and all that other stuff. So the number was very small. So we were getting a residual of a small number to begin with. And, um, you know, but we did that for about three and a half years and we did it at a very high level. You know, Glenn was an internet program, uh, a, a coder, a programmer, an internet guy. He was a website developer. Um, and, and again, he was an entrepreneur. Uh, Glenn had started something like 17 companies before he started eXp. He started an online business that he says was a dot bomb. 
Uh, he took a company public. Uh, he was the America Online Financial Chat, chat Room Advisor. So very brilliant uh, individual, uh, very enlightened, very progressive, very forward thinker. Um, you know, uh, some of our core tenets are sustainability, but not just business sustainability, environmental sustainability. You know, if you think about, um, you know, uh, CO2 and carbon, you know, running a large office building is actually one of the biggest offenders of CO2. So, so he's very much in tune with sort of leaving this world a better place than, than what we, we found it. Right. And that's kind of, that was actually my mom's old, uh, philosophy whenever I'd go play over at my friend's houses she'd always say leave them leave them nicer than when they were when you got there right so in other words I was you know cleaning up my friend's houses <laughs> you know that was my focus but that's kind of how this company and, and again exp in a nutshell what is exp exp is the answer to the question is can we create an economy proof brokerage model to that point you know here's Glenn running you know seven or eight teams around the country and we get very little in, in terms of profit share so we left Keller in 2008 and we started a company called buyer tours and a lot of people don't know this little piece of history because this was our first attempt at a real estate brokerage but this was pre the crash of 2009 so you know we just did what everyone else would do we got offices we filled them with equipment we hired brokers we 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 staffed up oh and keep in mind he was already running you know six or seven very high level websites so that had a, an expense to it and so um, when we left Keller and started buyer tours, um, you know, every expense he had was times six. And so, uh, and again, we were on track to do probably 150, 200 million that year. And then in about October of 2008, for those that have been in the business uh, that long, uh, you remember uh, the market crashed. I mean, it was literally like uh, we got the rug pulled out from under us and um, it was a very challenging time. And uh, if, if you even lasted in the business, you remember, I mean, those were some very, very, um, you know, lean years for real estate transactions. I know of a few agents that actually made most of their money and, and fed their families by doing BPOs and, you know, becoming short sale uh, negotiation uh, specialists. And, you know, you really had to like carve out some sort of specialized niche to even, to even stay in the business. Uh, most people lost 40% or 50% of their home value. You know, people were losing 40, 50% of their net worth. And so it was just a very, very uh, uh, tough time for all of us. But that was also sort of the perfect storm for what we ended up creating, which is now called eXp Realty. So in 2009, um, we started really meeting every day inside of a 3D immersive office environment. And we now call it the cloud office or eXp world. Um, and that's where we were able to bring in everybody uh, on a daily basis. Uh, Glenn could manage his staff. He could manage his, his internet team. He could uh, manage his team leaders. And then when we started bringing agents in, we could also train them, deliver support, education, collaboration, coach them up on the tools, the, the training, whatever, whatever they needed to do to be better agents. And oh, it was a money saver and a time saver. And not just a time saver for the agents, but it was a time saver for all of us. And it was a money saver for the company too. And that's really where the, where the, where the, where the fun starts. Because if you think about it, most brokerages have most of their money tied up in bricks and mortar costs. And that bricks and mortar is expensive. I mean, um, you know, Glenn would say it like this, you know, um, top performers are subsidizing office space for, for the lower performers, right? You know, it's, if you're busy in real estate, you're probably not sitting around an office all day checking your Facebook, right? You're out showing houses, you're taking listing appointments, you're going to inspections. Um, and so, you know, the, the folks sitting around an office space probably aren't the ones making the most money, right? And so that was uh, something we recognized very early on. So we got rid of it. We got rid of the office um, and we leveraged this cloud office opportunity. Well, that allows for us to do two more exciting things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a couple bullet points. And if you're taking notes, um, I would say, write this down. This, these are the four pillars of eXp. Um, this is what I would say are the four game changers, the four things that we're doing that no other brokerage is doing. And I, and I would say no other brokerage is doing any of the four thing, let alone all four of them, okay? And so the first one is cloud officing. Well, cloud officing isn't just one platform. It's not just one piece of technology. It's leveraging all of the greatest cloud-based technology so that we can collaborate, we can share information, we can, we can exchange ideas, we can stay connected to our brokerage. And so it's, it's leveraging all these different platforms to have sort of a cloud office mindset. 
another way of thinking that is you need to be a mobile office. You know, you, you know, I look at it like this. You want to know where my office is? It's right here. Okay. It's in my pocket. Um, and, uh, my office needs to go where I go. You know, real estate is not a desk job. You know, you, you gotta be out there. You got it. I, I played college basketball and they used to say, um, you know, uh, being a, a, a coach in college was you had to work the living room circuit, right? You'd be recruiting and talking to the parents and, you know, well, real estate's kind of, you're kind of working the living room circuit too, right? Or maybe the dining room table circuit, we'll call it. Okay. But you got to be out there. You got to be out there with the folks. Uh, my dad used to say you, to be a good salesperson, you got to be out playing in traffic. Um, I'm probably one of the few people whose parents told them to actually go out and play in traffic. Right. Uh, but that's what he meant. You got to be out there mixing it up. Um, and, uh, and so if you're sitting in an office or you think you need to be sitting in an office all day, I'm just going to tell you right now, you are not going to do well in real estate. Okay. Um, the clients don't even come in anymore, right? They stopped coming in. So in 2009, we rolled out EXP in earnest and it was slow and steady. You know, we grew year to year, um, uh, by, uh, by the, uh, I think six years in, we grew to be about a thousand agents, but then something exciting happened and we went public. And I would say that's the third game changer. So let me, let me recap again. The first pillar, cloud officing. The second being agent ownership. The third being seven-tiered gross commission-based revenue share. And I'm going to get into all this in detail here in a second. And then the fourth, I would say, is international collaboration. You know, being able to connect, partner with, be shareholders with some of the most amazing and brightest minds in real estate. I mean, if you think about it, I love real estate people. Um, we're some of the most uh, tech savvy, we're great marketers, we're social media experts, or we have to be, right? Uh, we're pushing the envelope, um, we build communities, you know, we're entrepreneurial minded. So who better to build a think tank, a company around your, than real estate agents? And, uh, and, that, and that's really a, in an essence of what, what, what I would consider EXP is. Think of EXP as almost like a, a think tank of real estate uh, experts. Um, and so you're connecting and you're plugging into this think tank, but, but it's not just that we all share the same logo. We're actually all shareholders. We're all partners financially through the stock. And I'll get into how that looks. But as you, you know, as, 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 as we started to get industry recognition, people started to, to come over. We started getting a, a brokerage here, a top team there. We started opening up more states. And again, after six years, we hit a thousand agents. But then six months after that, we doubled again. And then six months after that, we doubled again. And then in the last three years, we brought in something like 24,000 agents. And it's really just gotten uh, incredible over here. We're now the third largest real estate brokerage by agent count in the, in the business. Um, if you think about just individually owned brokerages, we're number one. You know, the only two bigger brokerages are Reology and Keller Williams. Reology is a conglomerate. That's Berkshire Hathaway. That's all these other franchise, you know, it's like a master franchise agreement. And then, um, and then Keller Williams is also a bunch of franchises. So they're not an in individually single owned entity. So EXP is actually the largest individual entity brokerage in the world. And we're also the fastest growing in the history of real estate. And there's a reason why. And I'm just going to, I'm going to give you a little, a little clue. It's not because of the logo. All right. Uh, I'm a big fan of the logo. I helped create the logo. I love the logo. I'm, uh, you know, uh, it's near and dear to my heart, but I am not here. I'm not a part of EXP because of the logo. Okay. I'm here to provide massive amounts of wealth for my family and future generations. And if your brokerage is not promising to deliver that kind of support and that kind of future for you and your family, then you need to be asking them some serious, tough questions right now. Um, I like to think of going to work for a brokerage as kind of like an investment opportunity. You know, if I, if I said, hey, folks, I've got a great investment opportunity for you today. Um, of course, you know, if I, you know, of course, we're looking at a real estate brokerage opportunity, but take the word real estate brokerage out, put the word investment in. All of a sudden, we're going we're gonna to ask different questions. We're going to start going, well, number one, how much is this going to cost me, right? You know, what's my investment? And then, but the bigger question is, what's going to be my return on that investment? You know, how much money am I going to get back? And, um, and obviously you wouldn't invest if the return is going to be less than what you're putting in, right? So we always think of investing as I'm going to get more back. Well, that's how you should look at joining a brokerage. You should literally ask the brokerage, if I invest into you, if I invest my business into this opportunity, what am I going to get back? 
And let me just tell you, you do invest when you go to work for a brokerage. You invest, well, literally money, right? Fees, splits, you know, desk fees, copy fees, whatever you're you know, spending money on to work at that brokerage. Um, that's an investment. But you also invest some other things. And some of these are very important, like your time. You know, in, in real estate, um, as a real estate professional, your time is literally your only commodity. I and mean, yes, we have expertise. Yes, we've got an amazing network. We're good negotiators. But the commodity, the thing that you're giving of yourself is your time. And, 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 and it turns out that's the only thing you can't get back. Um, and so what you spend your time on in real estate is very important. Um, you know, they've done studies. I know we all think we work 80 hour weeks and, you know, but uh, I'll be honest, I don't work 80 hour weeks anymore. Okay. Uh, I don't think I ever did. Uh, but, you know, they've done the math and you actually only have about 53 to 56 hours a week to be productive, right? Take out sleeping and eating and, you know, all the other stuff. You know, you're really looking at about 53 hours. So if you're spending two or three hours to drive down to an office to get a question answered or meet with your broker or get a check or something like that, you can't get that three hours back. And that is probably not the best use of those three hours on a Tuesday afternoon. So that's just kind of how EXP tries to elevate our mindset. We're, we're thinking, we're working smarter, not harder. You know, we're leveraging technology to duplicate our efforts and be in more places at once. Do you know what separates a, um, uh, um, like an independent contractor from a business owner? In essence, nothing. Um, you know, if you think about R Robert Kiyosaki, Cash Quadrants, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, we've all heard about that book or read that book. Well, he's got the four quadrants. You've got has a job, you've got self-employed on one side of the column, and then you've got a business owner and investor on the other side of the column. Well, on the, on the left side of the column, having a job or being self-employed, that's 80% of the population. And we all know what job stands for, right? Just over broke, okay? And being self-employed just means you own your own job, but you still are the center of the hamster wheel. You're doing everything. You're, 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 you're in charge of the, the entire ship. Um, well, what separate, how do you get over to the right side of the, the, the quadrants, right? Well, 80% of the wealth is on the right side in business owner and investors. So how do we get from the left side, having a job or owning my own job, to being a business owner and investor? Well, the, the cool transition piece is going from self-employed to business owner. Do you know what separates a self-employed person from a business owner? Nothing. Just the business owner does things differently. They employ teams and systems. They're not doing it all themselves. And so when you, even just joining EXP, and doing one transaction, guess what? You're going to get stock. And in this, now you've just literally leapfrogged over into being an investor. And you can call yourself a shareholder. And that's powerful. Um, Glenn said to me when I first started working for him, he said, Brian, he said, every real estate agent should start a brand or think of themselves as a brand or think of themselves as the CEO of their own Fortune 500 company. And that was a very powerful moment for me because it really helped to crystallize what he was really talking about, which was no one's coming to help me, you know, and that's what he was basically saying is, Brian, you are in charge of a fortune 500 company and you have to do it all yourself. So of course, you know, you're going to, you're going to treat your business a little differently than if you're just chasing deals, right? So we're definitely part of this new sort of wave of companies that leverage cloud technology, leverage collaboration, leverage the internet, you know, and, and ultimately we've gotten away from bricks and mortar, right? We, uh, people have referred to us as the Amazon of real estate or the Netflix or the Uber. Um, and uh, we certainly are living up to the bill. Um, but um, there's, it's a whole vocabulary shift. You know, it's not, we don't do things kind of, the, I call it in the old world, right? The typical franchise bricks and mortar model, I consider that sort of like the horse and buggy world right? Um, and we're automobile engine sales people. And so, um, you know, the horse and buggy world has local confinement, right? You know, you're only sort of, you know, your collaborative community is whoever happens to be in the cubicle next to you that day. Or maybe you've got one broker and they do all the training or, you know, maybe they bring in somebody to do some training, but, but it's inconsistent training. It's inconsistent, um, you know, growth incentives, limited support, limited technology and costly million. overhead. And, uh, Oh, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I'm going to pop that mic off real quick. 
Okay, sorry about that. And so, um, so we're just a whole different animal uh, when it comes to EXP. I mean, it's literally, I, I think it does us a disservice to even call us a real estate brokerage. It's almost like a, um, it should be called a real estate wealth creation company meets a personal improvement company disguised as a real estate brokerage. Because this isn't just a lateral move. You're not just bringing your 12 deals over to EXP to do 13 or 14 deals. What I, what I was talking about earlier is if you invest your business into EXP, I guarantee you will make more money over the long haul selling houses and working with buyers and sellers at EXP than you can make anywhere else. So if you're gonna go through this entire exercise of building a big gigantic business, you might as well plant that business in the most fertile soil possible. You know, I'd mentioned earlier, there's two types of agents. I think of them as sort of hunter gatherers and farmers. And I'll use a great analogy. Um, one acre of land if, 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 uh, can support one hunter gatherer. But an acre of land, if farmed, can support a thousand people. So think of your business. Are you just chasing the, that one deal? Cause, and then you got to keep as much of it as you can. I need to keep 100%. You know why you need to keep 100%? Because you're not sure when that next deal is coming. And that's the problem is it's a mindset problem. It's coming from a place of scarcity instead of abundance. And so I would say, I would suggest, look at this like you are setting up a master farming system. And it may take a little bit of time on the front side, but once you set this thing up, I promise you the return is going to be exponentially greater than anywhere else. All right, so let's get into some of the numbers and some of the other cool stuff and, and, and how I can prove that that's, that's a true statement. And again, by doing very little more than what you're already doing, selling houses and interacting with real estate professionals, you're gonna make exponentially more money at eXp than you would make at any other brokerage. All right, here's how it works. Um, let me jump ahead a little bit. So um, let me cover the stock first, all right? The stock's very important. Um, you join eXp, we're publicly traded on the NASDAQ. Our stock ticker is eXpi. You can pull out your smartphone and look it up on your Yahoo chat, uh, your Yahoo Finance, or even I think a lot of iPhones have a little stock ticker. You can check out the stock, go look at the history. We actually have an investor website called EXP World Holdings Inc. You can go check out our, our, our filings. I mean, we're very transparent. As a matter of fact, we're, you know, being a public company makes us even extra transparent because we get, um, you know, periodically audited by the feds and we have to follow certain regulations in the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we're super above board. You can see all the salaries, all the stock moves that the executives make. And so it's, it's pretty cool. But so um, to that end, you can earn stock at EXP or buy stock at a discount five different ways. So let's go over the five different ways. The first three we call our sustainable equity plan. So every time you do a deal, your, uh, your, excuse me, your first deal of the year, doesn't matter what size, your first deal of the year, it's got to be a sale, not a rental. Your first deal of the year, you get $200 worth of stock. Okay, so right out of the box, we want you to be a shareholder. You're going to get that stock. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're now a shareholder, right? You're not just agent number 10,001, or I'm not an independent contractor. Or I'm not working for my brokerage, I'm a shareholder of my brokerage. And that's a powerful switch. I mean, it's subtle and it may not feel like a lot, but it is, it's a big difference. Uh, you're gonna just do things differently. Glenn would say your vibration levels are gonna elevate, right? Just the way you think of yourself, you're gonna go to shareholders events and you know, you might throw a sport coat on and you know, whatever. And I, I find myself wearing uh, pocket squares now in my, in my, in my suit jacket, because I'm a shareholder, right? Uh, but that's just kind of, it's a lot of this is mindset, right? How you think of yourself, um, and what you say about yourself is usually what's going to end up being your reality, right? Um, second hey, one Brian. down. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Jump when you in. Uh, are going to a shareholder event, I've never been to a shareholder event in my life until I went to the EXP uh, shareholders event um, about a year ago, uh, the, well, the last one, and it was one of the most amazing events I've ever been to, seriously. Uh, I mean, I was at the pool with Glenn Sanford, uh, you know, with my shirt wide open, uh, talking to him about just different stuff, uh, going to different events. And I mean, it was amazing. I was extremely like almost depressed that we couldn't do it this year due to COVID. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, 
yeah, you do think of yourself differently and you do learn a lot of stuff about the company, a lot of things you just didn't know when, when you go to these different events. Well, and I'll, and I'll build on that comment because um, we do two events of the year. We have an EXP conference, our annual conference. We call it EXP Con, like Comic Con, EXP Con. And then we have our shareholders event. Um, they're both annual. Uh, we're always picking really nice, beautiful, you know, locations, Vegas, Orlando, New Orleans. You know, we've been all over. We were in San Antonio a couple of years ago. And, um, and what's really cool is uh, the one's kind of a week long. It's super fun. You know, we get everybody together. You know, we get thousands and thousands of agents that show up at that one. Shareholders is a, is a little shorter of a, a week, but it's, uh, it's also loaded with all of the brass you know, a lot of the executives. So if you want to come connect with like, like Clifton said, if you know, if you want to be hanging out at the pool, you know, uh, having a Mai Tai with the CEO, you know, come to the shareholders event, because it's going to just be a little more intimate of a setting. And that's where all the icons will be like Clifton, and all the top agents, all the brass, all the leadership, you know, everybody kind of, I mean, you'll see them at both. It's just a smaller crowd. So you'll have more access, right? But that's a great point. And, it, and it's true. I mean, it literally, I mean, I told you before, when we started this call, um, I moved out to Arizona with all my clothes in a garbage bag. Okay. I mean, I was collecting unemployment. I was checking my email at the public library. Um, you know, I was, I was, you know, borrowing money out of my roommate's cup holder so I could buy a 99 cent Whopper. And then I met Glenn. And by the way, Glenn wasn't rolling in the dough either. You know, he just was onto something and I recognized his mastery very early on. Um, but, uh, you know, just, true story. I mean, when Glenn and I started EXP, uh, they had just foreclosed on his house. And, um, you know, he was, uh, you know, uh, getting ready to rent an RV so he could, you know, drive around the country and live out of his RV. So, you know, we didn't have a bunch of hedge fund money. And, you know, we I mean, we maybe borrowed 10 grand from a friend, 10 grand from a parent. And, uh, you know, we put all of us as sweat equity and, you know, uh, word of mouth. Okay. So we were not, uh, you know, we're not some billion dollar investment group that started this company. This is, you know, it was me, my wife, Glenn, his ex-wife, a couple tech people and uh, a couple uh, brave brokers in those early years. And that's who built this company. I mean, it's literally been a each one, teach one, one conversation at a time. And um, it's been pretty exciting to watch, you know, 15 years later, um, you know, I'm still in kind of pinch me. Is this really my life? And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but that's a great point, Cliff. And it, it really is a mindset, um, evolution by joining this company. You're just going to be around some amazing people. All right. The next one down you. So capping at EXP. And by the way, I have a slide with all the, you know, fees and stuff. So I'll share that in a minute, but, but just, so, just so you understand, um, to cap at EXP, it means the most you're going to spend towards the company dollar. So at EXP, our cap is 16,000 for the year. So once you've paid 16,000 to EXP, so it's 80, 20 split. Once you pay 16 to the company, you go to hundred percent for the rest of your anniversary year. Oh, and if you hit that cap, you get $400 worth of stock. Um, I don't know if Trenton's on the call, but he has a really funny video where he went in to see a, um, a, a, a stock broker. And he said, I got something I want you to invest for me. And he pulls out a big bag and he starts pulling out these trophies. And he's like, yeah, I earned these at my last brokerage. And he's like, hold on, there's more, hold on. You know, and he has about four or five trophies. He lines up in front of his, you know, his uh, Morgan Stanley stockbroker or whatever. And he says, uh, all right, I want you to invest these for me. And the, and the stockbroker looks at him and he's like, these are trophies. What do you mean? And he's like, well, I won these. I'm a top agent. I got these trophies from my company. So I, I want you to uh, put these to work for me. Uh, invest these. And the whole joke is, you know, you're getting a freaking trophy or you're getting a paper certificate. Well, at EXP, your certificate actually has a real cash monetary value attached to it. And it's in the form of stock. Um, and the third one down is uh, you get stock for everybody you sponsor when they do their first deal of the year. Okay. So, uh, so that's a great way. It incentivizes us to want to help grow this company, right? You're going to get stock for everyone you introduce. Uh, you don't have to be their team leader. You don't have to manage them. You don't have to train them. You don't have to hold their hand. All you have to do is introduce them to the company, get them on a Zoom call like this, bring them to a, a, a meeting in the cloud office, have them sit down with a friend or one, somebody in your upline and just tell them the opportunity. That's it. You're just sharing opportunity. Don't think of yourself as having to recruit. Don't think of yourself as having to memorize this presentation. All you got to do is say, hey, have you ever heard of EXP? You should take a look at this. 
right? All right, next one down, Icon Agent Award. This is awesome. So, uh, well, actually, Clifton, you get, you just got your uh, is it was it your second Icon Award or? Uh... No, this is uh, my third third Icon. So you're three time Icon. Why don't you tell everybody what the Icon Award me means to you? Oh man, um, I, I I would say that um, I kind of like you mentioned. You know, when you get these awards at different brokerages, they have no monetary value to them. Um, just the other day, I believe Jonathan, who's actually on the call here, was in my office and I showed him the monetary value of what I'm getting from uh, these awards, these three-time awards. So when you can show somebody, you know, X amount of dollars that the company is giving you back from what you put in, then, you know, it kind of, you know, it adds value to your work and your business. And, and what you're putting into uh, your business in the company. So uh, I've, I've, you know, EXP has just uh, exceeded my expectations. And I think the Icon Award is pretty much the icing on the cake with that. And so this is the best award you can get in our company. And like Clifton just described, I mean, not only is this just, I mean, a huge thank you and a vote of confidence. I mean, you're in the top one or 2% of our company if you get this award. Um, I think you probably did somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 to 15 million to get this award. You, you probably did more than that, but, but that's what it takes to get this award or 20 deals after cap. So if you're doing a lot of units, you can hit it through units or you can hit it through volume. It's about 500,000 GCI. Well, if you hit that icon status, you get your $16,000 cap, you get it back as stock and you can apply for this every year. Um, just to put that in perspective, if, uh, if you would have been an icon agent in the year 2015, um, average stock price was like 40 cents a share, 30, 40 cents a share. It would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of 40, 50,000 shares of stock that now be worth over half a million dollars. And I guarantee, uh, the icon award that you've been getting the last three years has probably worth more than the $16,000 that you've invested, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now that the stock, I just posted the uh, market watch on there. I think it's like sixteen thousand. I mean, sixteen dollars. Yeah, sixteen forty uh, something. You know, I look at my account. I'm like, wow, I've only been with the company almost actually less than three years, and uh, I'm I'm doing very well. So I like to call the I, I, I anyone who hits icon, you're actually what I call a hundred percent plus. You know, he's not eighty twenty anymore because he got a sixteen thousand back, and then that sixteen thousand in stock well, over time, it should grow, right? And so just like Clifton's has grown, you know, so he invested 16. And now he's getting an exponentially greater return. And by the way, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, the bigger the company grows. And so just from that one award alone, now, there might be somebody on the call who's like, Brian, I'm only doing six to eight deals a year. That why does that award even matter to me? Well, you might know a Clifton Johnson, you might know a Trenton Johnson, you might know somebody who's doing 15, 20 million a year. Well, now you have uh -huh. a stock right? Now you've got a stock award to use to attract that person to EXP. And then they get to go into your cash flow business in the form of the re revenue share. All right. So I don't know of any other company where you're going to get to use the company's stock to go out and grow your personal business. It's pretty unheard of. And let me cover the last award because this one you can get the first time you do a deal and every deal after that. It's basically the age and equity program. This is where you can put up to 5% of your GCI into getting discounted stock. Um, it's 10% off stock. So just to put that in kind of real numbers or give you a, a kind of a, a working scenario, let's just say you do a $350,000 home sale um, that you can take 5% of that GCI. So the 3% of 350 is somewhere in the neighborhood of $10,000. So that total commission is the GCI. You can take $500, and by the way, the company automatically does this. It comes right out before it ever hits your bank account. Um, it goes into your, your Morgan Stanley ShareWorks stock tracker. You can track it. You can watch it. You can sell it. You can look at it, um, watch it grow. But the coolest part about it is that $500 is buying you $600 worth of stock. So literally, even if the stock doesn't go up a penny, you just made money buying that stock. And this is the only way you can get discounted EXP stock. I wish there were other ways, but there's not. So the only way to get discounted stock is by selling houses at EXP. All right. And by the way, all five of these stock awards 
are based in production. Because I think, you know, if you've heard of eXp or maybe you've heard some of the, some of the myths out there, uh, you know, they like to say that we're just about agent count. We don't, you know, we're just about recruiting. We don't care about productive agents. Well, um, as a matter of fact, you don't even have to f think about the recruiting stuff. You don't have to think about attracting agents. You can just put your head down, sell a bunch of houses, and you're going to get paid more money at eXp than you would anywhere else over the course of your career. I'll give you a great another story. He's not on the call tonight, but I have a friend named Kevin out of Albuquerque, um, New Mexico. He's been with us seven years. Um, he came in as a rookie seven years ago. He just put his head down, and sold houses, and you know took the training, took the classes, collaborated with other agents. He was a capper in his first three, and he's been an icon in his last four years. Um, didn't bring in a single person in his first six years. Okay. Just put his head down, sold houses, training, implemented the systems, et cetera, et cetera. I, I ran into Kevin at one of the last events. I said, Kevin, how much stock have you earned in your, in your, since you joined eXp? And he, and he said, well, let me go check. And then he came back and he said, Brian, I, I got over 2.5 million in stock. And he, and he just turned 35. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I wish I was, uh, I wish I was on this, uh, uh, many, many years ago. Like, like when I was a brand new agent, I wish they had an opportunity like this when I was brand new to real estate. Cause I don't know how much stock I'd have at this point, but uh, it'd be a lot. Uh, and I have a good chunk as the co-founder and the, and the president for three years. But, um, but here's a guy that just put his head down, sold houses, and now he's a multimillionaire and he's not even 35 and he's only been in real estate seven years. So that's the power of the stock opportunity. Any questions on that before I move on? Good stuff though, right? I mean, this is it. This is the, this is why everybody's joining eXp because you're just going to make, you're going to create wealth because here's the cool thing. I mean, if you, if you, you know, I could really get into the weeds, but like, you know, income doesn't come in all the same shapes and sizes, right? You've got hourly income, you've got salary income, you've got commissions, contracts. Um, you've got, you know, um, uh, but all of those incomes have one thing in common and it's us, right? In other words, if I don't work an hour, I don't get paid for an hour. If I don't work for the year, I don't get paid my salary. If I don't complete the job, I don't get the contract, you know, work uh, payment. If I don't close the house sale, I don't get the commission. And so I'm at the center of that hamster wheel. We call that linear income. In other words, if you take me out of the equation, the income stops. But there's other forms of income. Um, there's passive, and which we're about to get into. But there's equity income. You know, there's business interest. So there's there's other income streams that you really want to start getting your hands on, um, because what's cool about re uh, passive income and and equity income is once you start to build them and and set them up, you can actually step out of the equation and the income keeps building. Now, we all sell houses. As a matter of fact, I'm still selling houses. Uh, I just got out of an a, a, a inspection uh, earlier today. But I don't have to sell houses anymore. And that's, that's like, that is huge. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll always, I'll never retire. But I'd like the option to retire someday, right? I at least would like the option. I don't want to just be as good as my last sale. I don't want to make every year in real estate like my first year. So I'm, as I'm, selling my houses and I'm talking to agents. I'm just putting a little chunk here, a little chunk there, a little piece here, reinvest it there. Okay. Let's go over the revenue share because this is equally, if not more lucrative than the stock. All right. So again, revenue share, it comes in all shapes and sizes. You know, there's profit share, there's uh, royalties, there's, you know, licensing agreements. You could do income properties. I mean, there's a million ways to create passive income. Ours happens to be a seven tier gross commission based revenue share plan. So the way to read this chart, and we're going to jump over to a calculator and put in some real scenarios here just to, just to break this down. But I just want you to understand kind of the moving, moving parts here real quick. So if you introduce someone or lots of someone's, but if you're the sponsor, you're going to earn three and a half percent of their gross commission up until they cap. So let's just say you bring in one capper in your first year, someone who does about three million in sales. That's going to net you $2,800 for that year. Okay. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, you're not, you're not going to, you know, you're, we're not going to consider you rich from that, but 
uh, hey, that's going to pay for a couple cell phone bills and, uh, you know, maybe a, a go towards some, you know, some car, car payment or whatever. And so, you know, $2,800 is not nothing. And that's just from one person. What if you brought in 10 cappers? That's $28,000. Okay, now we're starting. And that's every year. And that's if they don't bring in a single person. Well, what if those 10 bring in a few people, right? And those people bring in people and so forth and so on. Well, you can actually earn percentages on every level through seven generations. So if I bring in Clifton, I can earn three and a half percent on his commission. And by the way, it's not from his side, it's from the company side. Because at some point I start to explain this to people and they go, um, I don't want to earn money off of other agents. You know, that's not cool. And I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, you're in real estate. Have you ever earned a, have you ever gotten a referral before? They're like, well, yeah, I get referrals all the time. I'm like, well, okay. Well, in that case, you actually did take money off their table. In this case, you're only taking money off the company's table. The agent's going to keep their money. The company just gets less and less and less and less. Okay. So I like to think of these as tiny little referral fees. That's it. Right. Um, and that's what separates us from like a network marketing company or a pyramid or whatever, you know, those, those terms people like to throw around when they try and, you know, talk us down. And so, so you're actually getting a little piece, but you get it every time they do a deal, not just once. And then anyone they bring in, they bring in, they bring in, they bring in for seven generations. But let me just kind of spell it out a little bit clearer on a, uh, on a, on a rev share calculator. All right. Um, normally I'll ask a room full of agents when I'm doing this presentation, I'll say, Hey, somebody throw out, you know, what do they think the average agent will do a year at, in terms of number of transactions? Somebody just throw out a number. Clifton, go ahead, throw out a number. What does the average agent do a year? Uh, man, my average agent, I'm going to say 15, but the average agent, I'm going to say seven. Okay. I was, I, I was going to say, let's take your average and half it in half. <laughs> so, so that's perfect. So seven deals a year. That's about right. One every other month. Uh, and I, you know, I think NAR is like eight or nine deals a year. Uh, what, what's the average price uh, in that market over there? Uh, I would say about 225 all right. And that might even be a little high because this is going to be for the whole country. So let's even dial that down and just make it a flat 200. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to, and I'm not even going to be greedy. I'm going to say 2.5% commission. Okay. So again, you, you've gotten seven deals. And, th and th this doesn't matter how much you sell personally, this just applies to everybody in your entire organization. So I tried to come up with a little bit of an average you know, you're talking about a $1.4 million a year producer who's never gotten a 3% commission, right? All right, so that's the one average. And if they're doing anything less than a million, million and a quarter, they're not a full-time real estate agent, all right? So, so let's, that, that's the one assumption. All right, so, um, you know, just think of a number in your head if this is the first time you're seeing this. And if I said, okay, how many people do you think you could introduce to me or to Clifton or to Trent or somebody that invited you to this call, Glenda, somebody? And, uh, and how many people that you do you know in real estate do you think you could introduce to us over the next 12 months? Now, listen, if you've been in real estate for more than a year, you probably got a hundred names in your cell phone alone. You probably got hundreds on Facebook and LinkedIn and, you know, you're part of real estate groups and you go to happy hours and, and broker tours and, you know, classes with them and, you know, real estate agents are everywhere. Okay. All right. So, so let's just say in your first year, you only bring in four people, right? Maybe you introduce us to 10 and we only, you know, successfully introduce four people to join. Okay. And then let's say those four only bring in one each. So this is your first year. You brought in four people, one every three months, and they only bring in one person for the entire 12 months. All right. And let's calculate that. All right. So you're making about $4,900 on that front line on those four people. And then you're only getting like $280 on level two. And I did that on purpose because if you look at the way this revenue chart pays out, you get that three and a half percent on level one. You get that no matter what. Okay. And as a matter of fact, you even get that if you don't, if you at some point just decide to stop selling houses, you still can collect revenue share. So the revenue share is not tied to how many houses you sell. It's completely independent. Okay. But then if you only brought in one person and that person goes on to bring in people who bring in people, bring in people. You can earn 0.2% on level two, 0.1% on level four, uh, levels what, three, four, and five, and then 0.5, 0.5. That's not 1%, it's 0.1%. It's a fraction of a percent. 
It's not a lot, right? Hence the $280 number, right? Well, how do I get this bigger number added to that number? Well, say, like, like I said, you only, let's say I only brought in Clifton. Well, if I can go out and bring in four more Cliftons and I could be so lucky, right? If I had five people in my front line, I'm unlocking that 3.8 and it gets added to 0.2 for a total of 4% on level two. All right, let's go back to the rev share calculator. So again, I'm at four. If I just bring in one more, watch what happens to that 280. Watch this number down here, okay? I'm just gonna add one more person to my front line, $7,000. Because now I'm making 4% on level two. So how many people do I have in my entire group? I brought in five. And I've got, and they brought in one each. So I've got five on level one and five on level two. I've got 10 people in my entire organization. I'm already making 13 grand a year extra, right? That's a thousand dollar bonus a month for introducing five people to the company. Now I'm just going to kind of speed this through here real quick. So let's just say everybody in your entire organization only brings in one person. So again, you know, it didn't add too much to the bottom line because you're just getting those little now 0.5% is not, you know, it's not nothing. You know, it's something and it adds up over time, but it's not the big money. So how do I get the big money on level three? You bring in five more agents. So now you're at 10. Watch that 175 number just jumps up to eight grand. Okay. 15 gets you level four, right? Boom. So maybe make that your, 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 maybe make that your three-year goal. I'm going to bring in five people a year for three years. Now I'm at 15 right? Five people a year. Everybody else just brings in one person. That's $66,000 a year extra. Okay. And here's where it gets exciting. It's not all just you doing it. Let's say your second line starts to get with it and they average just two people over the course of those three years. So your 15 brought in two each who all just bring in one each, one each, one each. You know, again, it starts to grow pretty quickly. Okay. Here's a good, uh, I call this a, a good first year goal. Write this down. Okay. Bring in five people and help those five bring in five each. Okay, so you bring in five, they bring in five, and, and we'll just put zeros in for the rest. Five would bring in five. That's 30 people in your entire organization. You're closing in on 40 grand a year. Oh, and guess what? They're not that great at selling houses, by the way. Okay, because you can actually earn double that. If they were cappers, you know, this is about 1.4 million. You, could, you get paid up to 3 million. So if I made that a 14, it's just going to double, right? If I made that a 14, now you're at 80 something grand a year. But now not everyone's gonna be a capper, so I'd like to keep this kind of modest, right? All right, here's another goal. Let's say you bring in, here's a good, how many people on the call, just raise your hand or you know, put it in the text chat, a, a yes. If um, a six figure passive income would help you towards retirement. In other words, 100 grand a year in mailbox money that just shows up in your bank account, whether you get out of bed or not, would that help you towards retirement? Would that help you send somebody to college? Would that help you uh, reinvest into your lead generation program? Would that help you uh, take a, a week or two off and you know go on vacation or you know go overseas or whatever, right? Because as real estate agents, we we don't get to we don't get to take a lot of time off, right? Because we always need the deal. We always have to be by our phone. You know, we work nights, we work weekends. You know, we have a very unhealthy life work balance. A lot of us has second jobs, you know, just to get that steady money in. Well, this becomes your steady money, right? So here's your five-year retirement plan. Ready? Write this down. Five years from now. I want you to bring in a whopping two people a year for five years. So after five years, you've brought in 10 people, okay? Two people a year. It's not hard. And let's say your 10 do the same thing. You bring in 10 who bring in 10 each, 110 people in your front two levels, you're making $152,000 a year in passive income. And oh, by the way, they're all pretty average at selling houses, okay? You don't have any, you know, icon agents in your organization. You don't even have cappers in your organization. These are all half cappers. And you're making 152 grand a year. That's not a bad, that's not an, un, I mean, have I said anything, Clifton? Have I said anything that's unrealistic? Not at all. Just put in the group, I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, it's not that hard. I mean, it's definitely, you know, everyone has the propensity to, you know, uh, be intentional in uh, their agent attraction and uh, inviting people to take a look at the opportunity, to take a look at the uh, business model. 
Uh, if it's for them, it's for them. If not, then you know, just keep it moving. Um, there's an agent on my team named Brandon Yates. I mean, he does a phenomenal job at really building a relationship with the other agent on the other end of the deal. And um, I'm gonna have him talk to the team. And you know, that's what it's all about, just building relationships and bridging the gap and just letting them know, you know, about the business model and what's out there. It's exactly right. It's uh, you're, you know, I, I kind of like the flip it around and I'm going to put the text, I'm going to put the rev share calculator in the text chat. So anyone who wants to play around with this later, um, listen, I'm not making any income promises. You know, you got to do a little bit of this. You got to put a, put a, put in a little bit of work, but like Clifton said, you're already dealing with real estate agents. You know, Brandon's already talking to these people. Now he has the ability to monetize the relationships of the people that he'd like to work with. You know, in the past, in the old world, other agents represented competition, you know, and certainly if they're in your market, but, you know, you weren't probably inclined to, and you really didn't have the ability to partner with each other unless maybe you started a team and then you had to provide everything and invest and all that stuff. But now I have the ability to sort of grow an organization and I don't have to provide everything. EXP does it all for me. All I'm doing is sharing opportunity. It's kind of like, you know, who's going to win the race, the horse race. And all you got to do is tell people the, which number to bet on, right? Bet on EXP. Um, you know, another way of thinking of it is if you, if you do want to come over to EXP and you do want to do this with us, you know, don't think you have to go around and, you know, convince people to take a chance on us. I almost feel like you should have the mindset of why should we take a chance on you? Um, Cause we're going to pour into you, you know, we're going to, I mean, you're going to get tons and tons of uh, tools and support and training, not just from EXP, but then if you are, uh, and also if you do end up joining, uh, you know, Clifton's Titan, uh, Titan group, you know, you, you're going to get even more support and then you're going to get support from me because I'm your upline support. You know, I'm a, I'm a sponsor above Clinton, a few, a few levels up. And so I'm pouring into my organization. So you, I've got classes and trainings and, you know, I'm doing fun events and I'm doing stuff like this for my organization. And so, you know, you don't think of everyone of kind of, I don't want to say even above, but don't think of your upline as like more managers. Think of us as investors, you know, we're like invested in you because we don't get paid unless you get paid. So I always say, think of me as a shark tank investor for your real estate career. I'm invested in your success. And if you're not successful, I'm not successful. And, and that's just how I look at it. And so think of yourself as like a talent scout for the, for the Yankees or, you know, whoever, whatever sports team you want. But think of yourself as a talent scout. You should be going out there going, who's worthy to come work with us, right? Because that's going to change your MO, right? If you, if you go up to people and you're kind of like, hey, I hate to bother you. It's the same in sales too, right? I mean, if you call a client and you think you're bothering them and you kind of are exuding that energy and like, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. I hope, do you have a second for me? You know, they're kind of like, nah, not really. <laughs> but if you're like, hey, Joe, what's going on? Hey, I'm glad. Because I always thought even in sales, like, why is it a bad thing that I'm calling somebody? Like, if, if you're in like Michigan and you get a call from your Arizona real estate agent, that's kind of cool. Like, hey, everybody, hold on, I got to talk to my, I'm looking for properties in Arizona. Hold on a second. You know, like, well, I don't know. I just don't understand why why we feel so bad about ourselves as salespeople. You shouldn't. And you shouldn't feel bad introducing EXP to people either, okay? You're doing them a favor. I'll give you another great example, and this is actually a very good apt example. Like, you know, Clifton and Trenton, right? They're brothers. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Clifton, I'm sure you've been telling Trenton for a couple of years to take a hard look at EXP, right? Well, he eventually came over, and he's very happy he did. But imagine if Clifton never told Trenton about EXP and like they're both in real estate and you know, he just kind of kept it to himself and never shared with them all the stock he was getting and all the passive income he's created for himself. And all of a sudden 10 years goes by and you know, Clifton's sitting on 10 million in stock and he's making, you know, 50 grand a month in passive income and he never told Trenton about it. Yeah. He'd still be getting all those awards. Working out. <laughs> you probably wouldn't get invited to the next, you know, family event either. Would you? <laughs> um, so that's it. I mean, it's, you're doing them a favor. As a matter of fact, you're doing them a disservice to not share this. The fact, if you haven't seen this, if you're this is the first time you've seen this, you're probably not sitting there right now going, oh, this is a waste of my time, right? Because this is like nothing that's ever happened in real estate before. This is the first time where actually us agents, and I'm an agent, 
I've never been a broker. I've never been a, an office owner. This is the first time for where us agents get to actually get the tools of ownership. And, uh, and we don't have to invest. We don't have to you know, sell our way in. We don't have to be born into a brokerage or into a brokerage family, right? Um, it's like, um, you know, you think about for the history of real estate up until EXP, there were two, um, there were two strata of real estate professionals. There was the owner class and then there was the member class and the members serve the owners and the owners got to benefit and got to enjoy certain things that the, um, uh, oh, Trent's trying to get in. Let me, let me let him in here. So, um, awesome. So we got a few, few people who just joined us. So we're going to, we're just covering the rev share, but I'm, but I'm talking a little bit about the concept of how EXP is kind of like a real estate reformation. You know, if you think about the reformation period, it was sort of like taking the tools of the elite and giving them to the people. Well, this is what EXP has done. We've taken the tools of ownership and given them to the average agents. And so, for example, I'll tell you what, what, what did owners get to enjoy that the average agents did not, or, you know, us average agents? Well, owners got to own a piece of the asset. So the word ownership is in the word owner, right? The word own is an owner. So they got to own. Number two, they got to participate in every transaction. They got literally a piece of every transaction, right? They got to participate in the revenue, I call it. And the third thing that the owner class got that the agent base didn't get was they got to scale up their business. So for example, if you, know, you were having a, a rough month, you could go out and bring in five more agents to sell houses and, and, you know, and, and boost your income. But as an agent, if you're struggling, you know, and, 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 and you, and you, you know, you're having a couple lean months or you need to make more money. What do the owners tell us? Go sell more houses, right? That's your path out to sell more houses, right? I mean, when do we get to stop? So what's so cool about EXP really in a nutshell is it's, it's taking the tools of ownership and giving them to the agents. So we can all play the same game now. I mean, it's a total level playing field. And so this is a really cool opportunity. And again, you could be in the real estate for one day and join EXP, do a deal and bring in an agent. Now you're getting stock, you're getting passive income. Yes, you're also selling houses, you're getting tools, training support. So let's call, uh, any questions on the revenue share before we close this out and move on? And Trent, we were just talking about you, man. <laughs> your, your, your ears Come must on, have been man. <laughs> in Come a good on, way. Man. In well, we, you know, I brought up this point. I'm just going to double back since you just got on. I'm going to say, you know, we were talking about how um, you're doing people a disservice not sharing this with them, right? And I used the analogy of, I said, let's pretend Clifton and you were, I mean, you both were in real estate, but let's say he never told you about this. Right. And, and then 10 years later, he's got a couple million in stock. You know, he's making a million a year in passive income and he never told you what he was up to. I mean... Would, would he still? Would you guys still even be brothers? <laughs> We'd have problems. There'd be some serious problems going on. <laughs> right. I mean, now you know. Granted, I mean, are, is everyone going to join the first time you show this to them? Maybe, maybe not. But the fact that you know you're you're not bothering them—that's kind of what I'm trying to say. It's not a bother to share this kind of a life-changing, unbelievable opportunity with people. And you already know all these real estate agents. What EXP really gives us the ability to do is monetize our contact list. It's kind of what um it's kind of what Benny um was 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 saying uh I lost my train of thought just that quick. But in a nutshell, yeah, Cliff Cliff is mainly the reason. He didn't even he didn't really pitch it to me. You know, it was really I just kind of saw what he had in in uh you know, in his share works he had it open on his computer one time when I was over there and I started asking him about it because he he introduced it to me two years prior, right. but you know, I was caught up in capturing trophies and all that kind of stuff that mean nothing in the big scheme of things in regards to EXP. Um, and so I was like, I'm sitting up here capturing trophies and all this stuff and you got stock over here and that's growing while I'm out here working. Uh, let me tell me more about this. And, and so that's when I really got involved and, and uh, looked into it and uh, made the jump immediately. Yeah, I mean, you think of it this way. You're 
your trophies were collecting dust and his dust. stock and his stock was collecting interest. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly how I looked at it too. I even did a little. No, that I actually, uh, I, I told everybody about your video. We should, we should figure out a way to play that next time. To post the link. Yeah. Do you have a link? Post it in the text chat. That video is great. That's award. That's going to probably win the award at the next EXP con. Oh, my video. It should. <laughs> so, and we do fun stuff. So let me, let me finish out a couple of these other slides. And then again, we're going to kind of, you know, open us up for questions and kind of go around the room a little bit, but um, the, the hits don't stop with rev share and stock. We also have health, health, uh, health benefits. So healthcare benefits. Yep. So I actually bought in a uh, family of five. I thought I had unbeatable insurance. All my buddies that got into insurance were like, oh, I can beat that. I can beat that. No one could beat it. And I actually uh, signed up for Clearwater, which is the exchange that we're on. And I'm saving $2,000 a year for a family of five. And I've had a hip surgery. I've had some medical issues. And uh, I mean, this is an amazing healthcare benefit. And as far as I know, we're the only brokerage that offers that. Um, you're going to get an amazing tech package of solutions, um, not the least of which is a KV Core platform. Uh, KV Core is, um, is, a, is a really robust lead gen and CRM system. Um, this product alone, if you go Google KV, like the, the initials KV, um, if you go Google KV Core pricing, go see how much KV Core would cost you off the shelf. Um, last time I checked, it was something like $1,500 to sign up and 500 a month. And by the wow. way, all you're getting is a website and, uh, and a database. You still got to go pay for the, the pay per click campaign and you got to make it work. Um, or you could join EXP and you get this for part of your, your $85 a month fee. Okay. So this product alone is like six or seven grand. That's like half your cap right there in one product. Right. So again, um, and we've got some other great platforms that you're going to get. I don't want to get too in the weeds. If you have questions about the benefits, get with whoever invited you on the call, get with Trent, get with Clifton, and, and we'll get, get all your questions answered. What I like to think of this as is I, I, say, I say EXP, hashtag, it's just math. It's right? just math. It's just math. And then on the back I have uh, do your homework, EXP. But we want you to do your homework. We want you to try and pick this thing full of holes, you know, Find the downside. I challenge everybody that's looking at this for the first time. Find the downside. Find the reason why this is not going to work for you. I dare you. Okay, because we've thought of everything. I mean, we really have. And by the way, we continuously are adding more and more and more to the package. We've got an amazing marketing and branding center. We've got um, all these affiliated services. We've got, I mean, there's like three or four additional revenue streams just right here that you can create for yourself. You could be a mentor at eXp or you could get mentored, or if you're a team builder, you can rest assured that your agents, and as you're growing, and by the way, you don't just have to recruit in Dallas or Fort Worth or Scottsdale or wherever you're doing business. You can recruit anywhere that we're open for business. So right now, EXP is in all 50 states, all across Canada, UK, Australia, soon to be South Africa, Brazil, and Mexico. So you can literally recruit anywhere that we're open for business. You and you can even help us open up a new country if you got if you got talented contacts that are in real estate. So th these are all additional revenue streams that you can bring into your family finances. And I'll just tell you, that's why I am motivated to do this. Um, I love this company. I love the people. I love the leadership. I love the logo, as I talked about earlier. Um, but I'm not more loyal to this brokerage than I am my own family. Right. So if you're, you know, there's probably people on this call right now that are going, well, you know, my broker does so, so much for me, but the truth is, <laughs> well, they do. And they probably do. I mean, I've heard people say my broker bought, you know, paid my car payment or, you know, whatever. And, and listen, that's great. And there's great people all over and there's great brokerages all over this industry, but I'm telling you, I am not more loyal to my broker than I am my own kids and wife. I mean, that is why I get up in the morning. That is why I work my, my tail off. And that's why I, you know, fall asleep with one eye open, still hoping the kids have gone to sleep and uh, they're not running around the house. But, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, I'm here to build generational income for me and my family. And that is my first and only and primary concern. And then also my secondary concern is to help my organization. I'm committed Absolutely. to everybody on this call, you know, Clifton, Trent will tell you, 
you know, I put together a pretty, pretty robust calendar of events. As a matter of fact, let me jump over here and share that. So in addition to EXP, we, I mean, you know, and I could go on and on about EXP. Listen, it's like a good analogy of EXP is like, um, you know, trying to describe what a smartphone can do for you, right? It's like, where do I begin, right? right? I mean, there's right. just so much. So I've tried to kind of cover some of the high points, but um, and also everything's online. So if you have a question about the stock or you have a question about the rev share or the icon agent program, just Google EXP Realty icon agent program or EXP Realty calendar, and you'll see all the classes, all the training. Um, but this is just stuff I'm doing for, for the Colheen group. So anyone that joins under, under uh, Clifton or Trent or anybody on in, in, in this call, you also are by de facto part of my organization. And, uh, and, and that's where, you know, all of my energy, I'm reinvesting. I spent about a million dollars last year on my organization. Um, and, uh, and, it, and, and I'm just getting started, right? I mean, I, uh, I, I you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a young pup in this game. Okay. And, uh, and so, but this is something we're doing. Obviously, if you do join and you're part of the Titan Realty Group and you join and you get to be on the team, you're going to get more value being on the team. But also what's cool, and I'll just kind of point this out, is in the old world, you know, to be on someone's team, they, they didn't want you to get so good that you would leave them. And if you weren't very good, you were going to get bounced out. So in the old world, the team builders were kind of stuck with what I called this mediocre middle. Well, what's really cool now about the EXP model is Clifton, Trenton, they're empowered to push you out of the nest. They want, to, they want you to spread your wings and start your own brand and grow your own organization because that's just going to result in exponential more income for them. And they don't lose you. You know, if you're at any other brokerage and you're on a team and you leave that team, you are now a competitor. And effectively, that team just trained their competition. But at EXP, we stay connected through the revenue share. We stay connected through the stock. So it's super, super powerful. Let me share with you a couple other little just things that we use to stay connected, to, to chat with each other. We've got a really amazing, um, it's called Workplace. So this is yeah. a complement to our 3D cloud office, which I should probably open that too, just to share with everybody what the cloud looks like real quick. But while that's opening, well, it's going to take a second. Well, that's opening. Um, so the, the workplace is our water cooler. This is where we, you know, have the conversations all day, every day, across the world, people sharing ideas, connecting with the brokers, connecting with the staff, the leadership, the other icons. As an icon in this company, you, you get your own icon page. Other agents can come in. They can ask you questions. There's all kinds of conversations. You can see right now there's referral network conversations, luxury, wellness, water cooler chat, corporate announcements all, all, all day, every day, all kinds of great groups you can join and be a part of, icon referral groups. Um, and again, it's just all, you can start your own groups. I've got some Colhane groups that I've started. Um, and so this is just a cool, and it, basically it's Facebook for just EXP agents. You can get on here, you can text with the leadership, text with the, um, you know, like I've got a couple agents that I connected with around the, around the country that are helping me look for, uh, I'm looking to invest in some raw land now. So I've got conversations happening. There's a conversation with Glenn. And just again, I mean, this is a great way to connect. Build, it builds our culture. Oh, I think somebody's... Uh... <laughs> so let me do this. I'm going to share the cloud office so everyone can see that. All right. So... This is the cloud. That was my commute. I just logged in. You get this really awesome little well-dressed avatar, totally customizable. Um, there's usually, we're a little after hours today, but there's, there's still about 10, 15 people just bouncing around the world. Uh, there's always an information desk person here. They've got tours that go off every two hours that take you around and do orientations. You can come over here and see what's happening for the events that day, see what classes are happening. We've got tons of different training spaces, auditoriums, training rooms, broker rooms. Uh, so I'm actually logging into the auditorium right now. So there's actually a couple people in here having a conversation. I'm sitting in an auditorium. On Fridays, when you come in here, there'll be a thousand people in our leadership meeting uh, from all over the world every Friday. It's pretty awesome. It's like a big giant pep rally. Um, I have my own team suite. Let's say you got a question for the broker. So you just 
you just click on broker <laughs> stateroom. Uh, you come down here, click on Texas. I think most of you are, are in Texas. Uh, click on Texas. This will take you right to the broker support room. <laughs> and there will always be at least two or three, maybe more people in here waiting to help you answer questions, uh, help you with your file, help you write a contract. Uh, we've got onboarding support, transaction support. Again, we've got about six, 700 staff that are paid to help us grow our business. They'll do their state meetings in here. And what I like about the cloud office, again, it's a time saver. You know, I put on a headset, click a link, one hour meeting, all in, takes me an hour and five minutes, right? Five, you know, yep. one minute to commute, four minutes to freshen up my coffee, and, uh, and then I'm, uh, I'm in the office. And then when I'm done, boom, I'm out and I go about my business. Um, if you want to build a team, you can actually pick up your own team office. So we've got little password protected private. We've got tech offices. We've got human resources. I mean, it's super cool. We got all kinds of amazing stuff in here. So, um, and again, you can reserve your own room. So I'm actually now in, uh, what, uh, oh, I went to the demo room instead, but uh, you can go to your own. Uh, so let me just show you the Colhane Group's office and then we'll go ahead and shut this and we'll, we'll turn it over for questions. But, um, and again, folks, I talk fast. I'm trying to cram everything in so we can, uh, cover at least all the highlights here because it's a lot. But, uh, but again, I just logged into my office. Again, it's customizable. I've got my little company logo on here, Colhane Companies. Um, you know, I've got my office. I do training in here. We've got meetings in here. Um, any of my top agents that are like icon levels get their own office uh, so they can use offices in here, boardrooms, meeting rooms, and, and it's password protected. So I can control who gets in, who gets out. Um, all these little sub rooms are, are password protected. We actually had uh, um, uh, Clifton had his uh, team meeting in here the other day. And so we had a great little team meeting. And, uh, and so again, this is just another cool way to work. It's a time saver. It's a money saver. And had we not had this cloud office, had we had all our money tied up in bricks and mortar, like every other brokerage out there, guess what we don't get? You don't get the stock and you don't get the rev share, right? Because yep. all the money's going to the bricks and mortar. So, yep. all right. Whew. Any questions? <laughs> what does everybody think? I think we got a couple. Did we get any text chat questions? Let me just make sure I'm <clears throat> covering everybody. Uh, someone wants to know the uh, healthcare uh, plan links. Uh, if, if, if you or Christy, or, uh, if we can post that. Yeah, Christy uh, will do that. And I think you can even just type in, uh, uh, you know what, if you go to workplace and I'll just show everybody how I would find this, this is kind of cool. So if you go to okay. the home center here, click in uh, health care. One word, two words, hold on. So EXP Agent Healthcare, it's a group. There's 4,000 members. You can log in and get all the information that you need. And here it is right here, expagenthealthcare.com. So I'm going to grab that link. I'll put it in the text chat. Um, and it's an exchange, you know, so, but because we're growing so fast, because we're, uh, you know, 30,000 members now, um, we've got some buying power. You know, we can do some cool stuff. We can get our costs way, way down and then pass those savings along. Great question. So here we go on that. Um, you know, Trenton, you, you kind of got in a little late, but why don't you share a little bit of, I mean, Clifton kind of shared his story, but I want to maybe just see if you guys want to add anything or cover anything that I missed. Maybe to talk about, you've been with us now a little over a year. How's it going for you? Actually about six months. Six months? I feel like. Yeah, it's just been six months. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it. But I mean, it's been great. I haven't regretted anything. I mean, Everything happens for, you know, in God's time. So, I mean, I regret not being over here earlier because of stock prices, but, you know, kind of what happened in March, um, you know, took us back to the future with the stock prices. So I was able to gobble up a bit, <laughs> you know, um, but I mean, I've, I've truly enjoyed it. I think uh, the few of the agents, um, I think I've got about 10 agents I'm sponsoring and, um, you know, they're catching on. Um, they're using the tools. I really encourage everybody to use the tools, go to these classes. It's so easy. I mean, you literally, like, we can teach you how to work real estate, but we can't put that will and that, that, that want to win in you. You have to have that on your own. You got to bring that in the bag by yourself. We can give you the tools. You got to bring the bag of, of wanting to win. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're teamed up but with, with um, what I love about it is you're teamed up with with winners and people who want to 
help each other grow. The knowledge is great. You know, if I don't know something, you know, I know I can reach out to Cliff, uh, usually the other way around, but I usually call Brian if I need. <laughs> 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 uh, but it's, it's good to be in the right, on the right team uh, and, right. and know that your growth is exponential. And um, yeah, you don't have to be loyal to a broker because the broker that I left, uh, you know, everybody was like, what, you left? Because I was, you know, the numbers were good. You know, I was number one and went in and all this kind of stuff. But I always knew that it wasn't the broker. I always knew it was me. So right. when I left, you know, I was not like, I hope he still likes me. I could care less, honestly. It's about my family. And when I saw what EXP was doing with Cliff, you know, as far as the, the, the revenue share as well and, and the, uh, the stocks, you know, I was like, I want in on this. So, you know, I packed my bag, so to speak, and got up and left because we're in this to take care of our families and to build a uh, residual income and the financial wealth. And um, can't do that if all you have in the long run is a, a, the next deal and hoping it closes and stressing out about that. Um, there's more out there. EXP offers it. Let's go get it. That's right. Well, I always say, look, what's the alternative to a brokerage that shares the revenue with its members? It's a brokerage that just keeps all the money. <laughs> right. I, I never understood why they're the good guys and we're a scheme. Right? We're, yeah. we're a scheme because we share yeah. our money yeah. with you. Well, and by mm -hmm. the way, you know, you helped me too. Uh, bo uh, both you guys have helped me. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, I had Trenton in a couple Mondays ago and he taught a class in my, in my mindset class. So we had him come in and do a mindset training for my or entire organization. Clifton and I took a group of guys and, and we just did a leadership workshop together uh, offline with some, with some uh, leadership stuff we're, we're into now. And, uh, and that's where it's all about. I mean, it's about collaborating, helping each other, you know, connecting with these. I mean, there's no other opportunity where I would have met you guys and been able to partner with you and, and work together um, unless I would have probably joined your team, moved to Dallas and joined your team. Right. right. Exactly. Or, or maybe yeah. you guys want to join my team. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll debate that in the next workshop. But no, but um, I mean, that's it. In the old world, that was it. You either went to work for someone else's brokerage. And like Glenn would say, at some point, every top agent gets sick of building somebody else's asset. That's what happened. That's what happened on my end. And, you know, I was when I brought up Benny earlier, uh, Benny was a recruiting, you know, every, every department or every brokerage has a quote unquote, um, referral program. You get 400 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever. That's not a scheme here. You bring somebody, you help them, you create, or you introduce EXP and give them the opportunity to exponentially grow their wealth. And that's, this is a scheme. Okay. okay. I think somebody need to take a look at that. Well, and, and, Ever. And, and where do you think that information's coming from? It's coming from the other owners. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what? Honestly, because, I mean, at first, that's kind of what I thought at first. This DXP stuff is just, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, another marketing scheme or something. And then I think, you know, I wasted two years thinking like that, you know. And then when I really looked at it, I'm like, damn. Damn, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, but, you tell me, Cliff, why are you part of that pyramid scheme? Oh, Cliff couldn't tell me nothing. For two <laughs> years, he couldn't tell me nothing. You know, so I kick myself in the butt now. But you know, you know, uh, like I said, don't be, don't make that mistake. That's why I'm saying it here. Don't make the mistake yes. because number one, you, like I said, you're not, you don't need to be loyal to a broker. You need to be loyal to your family. Yes. Well, it's important mm -hmm. to own that because here's the thing. Um, it's actually one of the hardest things I can, the hardest thing about my job is to get talented people, busy agents to slow down enough to just put their eyes on this opportunity. So you were busy, yep. you know, you were running around, you were crushing it, you know, in the sort of what was considered the, you know, to be a successful top agent in kind of the old sure. world industry, you were at the top of your game. So it, at some level, you probably didn't even imagine there could be anything better than what you had. Right. I did. I was good. But if you can just get good. someone to slow down enough and just say, you know what, look, just take a look at this. Do me a favor. Now, if you're new or newer or, um, you know, kind of thinking of this opportunity, here's a great uh, approach. You know, just take the 
you know, we've got videos, we've got all kinds of great tools and listen, the machine's built. You don't have to come reinvent the wheel. I mean, we, we do lunch and learns every week. We do video, we do zoom calls every week. What I say is just take this video, go to show it to somebody and say, Hey, I'd love to get your opinion on this. You know, could you look at this with me? I'm thinking of joining this company, but I don't know. Could be too good to be true. Maybe you can find it down. And now they're going to actually look. Um, one of my favorite approaches just to meet agents is I'll just pop into an open house and I'll just start chatting up the agent. How's it going? How's business? Is this your listing? Oh, it's not. Wow. You're hungry. You're sitting in somebody else's listing. That's amazing. Uh, where do you get your leads from? Where do you get your marketing? Who pays for this? Who pays for that? And by the end of the conversation, I know everything about them. I know where their pain points are. And then I know what part of EXP to say, Hey, you know, this might be able to help you. And that's, if you just come from a place of, I just want to help you. I just want yeah. to help your business. You know, you're not a bad guy. You're not a bad girl. You know, you're just helping people and some will, some won't. Right. And by the way, some won't today, but they might tomorrow, you know, so just, it's like planting seeds. You're just talking to people, having the conversation and, and let them put the pieces together. Right. Just be a good inviter. That's what we always say. So, well, I just want to make sure I got every question answered. I know we've been going at it now for about an hour and a half. Um, I just want to, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.